Okay, let's look at how to do a Helm chart trigger for a CD pipeline. This is the Helm chart I'm going to use. It's uh, in an HTTP Helm server. I'm using Nexus, the repository, and I'm just going to add a new version here, and that's going to trigger the pipeline. So let's look at our pipeline. Here is the pipeline I created, and I'll just walk you through it really quick. It's got a deploy stage, and in the service, I add my Helm chart. And as you can see here, you select Helm chart from these options here. And then I'm going to connect to uh, Harness Nexus, uh, my little Nexus server here. And I'm just providing the URL to the repo and then my credentials. And that's all going to work out fine. And then in my actual Helm chart here, give it a name, specify the to-do list. That was the one I was showing you. And the chart version has to be a runtime input. If it's a hard-coded value, the trigger won't work. It needs to have a runtime input in order to listen for the latest version and put that version in there. Okay, and then we set the Helm, uh, set the Helm version here for version 3. Okay, the infrastructure is standard. It's just a Kubernetes cluster, default namespace. I'm just going to do a rolling deployment. All right, so let me look at the trigger I set up. So I just called it chart trigger, and here I select that um, here I'll delete it and do it again. Here I select the manifest. There's that to-do list. And that's selecting the manifest that's in my service that I showed you. Okay. Uh, conditions, you can set conditions on this such as, uh, well in the case of Docker it would be labels or tags, but in the case of Helm charts you can set it on versions and any of the metadata. And then we can do pipeline inputs. If you have input sets, which are basically a bunch of runtime inputs. You can add them here, and those will get applied when the pipeline is run. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that your chart version is a runtime input. So if your input set has a hard-coded value in there, that will get selected instead of the new version. Trigger will still run when a new version comes up, but that hard-coded value will be the version that gets deployed. So you don't want to put a hard-coded value in there. OK, so everything's set up to go. Let's go and let's do a new version. Okay, so I had 1. Or 0. 0.014 last time, so I'll increment it um, by one. Let's go into my chart here, edit this, and I'll make it five. Save it. Okay, let's just use curl to do this. Okay, uh, I'll package it. And there's 015, and then I'll send it over. Let me just update this to 5. And it did it. If I go and look, I'll have to reload this to see it here. And there's 5. And now if I go back here, I can see there's my, uh, my chart there, my trigger. And then if I go to execution history here, it should start to run any second here. Maybe I'll reload. I don't know, four seconds ago, five seconds ago. I switched just at the wrong time. <clears throat> and you can see it getting deployed here, initiated by the trigger. So now I can go in here and I can see it being run and being deployed. And it was successful. You can see it at steady state. So that's really simple, how to set up a uh, chart version and uh, have it trigger uh, every time a new uh, version is added to the repo.